Hello there everybody and welcome. I got a fresh new build for the primals for you and this time we're working numbers with the primal mammoth. So I'm a, I'm a sucker for cryomancy. I love ice builds and I think it's safe to say that this is by far the strongest ice build that I've played so far as the primals with the glacial mammoth have an insane synergy that we're going to use with this one. So it's a pretty straightforward cryo build, but it has a few nice caveats. It's very sustain heavy, it's very uh, summon heavy, and it's a lot of fun. So let's get started as usual with the racial and cultural traits. So here I went for hideous stench, and that's for me the must have, as we are playing a ice build, the minus two on status resistance is priceless. The minus two on resistance makes all of your elemental damages hit harder, so that's a win-win. We are pretty much swarming enemies anyway, so that's a pretty powerful one. Just keep in mind that your summoned units don't inherit that one, so you will need some native troops in the late game. You would use your tier three spear dudes for that. Overwhelm Tactics, well, it's such a classic. I think you could replace it with something that you'd want it to, but it is not necessary. Also not necessary is to pick the Arctic specialization of the uh, of the traits, because being primal culture, glacial mammoth follower gives you, gives you pretty much everything you would get from the Arctic specialization. The only thing you don't have is the terraforming spell, which you will get later on the tier three tome anyway, so really not worth picking up for the point. Now, cultural traits. I went up with mana channelers as, well, it is just such a classic right now with the primals as summoning is such a strong side on them. And the secondary went for powerful evokers. As we field a lot of battle mages and supporters, this gives us a lot of more um, combat casting capabilities and I find this a very powerful combo. Feel free to switch out the powerful evokers if you find something better. I personally didn't really come up with a solution that I really, really felt like it was better. Maybe the new trait to Druidic ter Terraformers White might be a really solid option as we're playing a lot with elementals. So, that being said, let's get into the tome section. So, of course, we start out with Cryomancy. That is uh, pretty clear. It is straightforward and nothing unusual here. It offers us what we need. We have upgrades for our ranged and or melee units. These are really good. And it is crazy nice that with your glacial mammoth boon your frostblade users synergize with themselves as once somebody has the rising fury upgrade completed they can freeze units and therefore increase their own damage by 20 percent the slow is also always applied so this is a really really nice synergy in the glacial mammoth we have here well frost arrows goes without saying the slow infliction is also very very nice to have white witch gives us access to super nice strategic freezes with the overwhelming stench trait it is even easier to apply these and you have dirty cheap easy access to powerful skirmishers foster these into their final form and you get super early access to tier 3 elemental units which are crazy good so there is something for every occasion even the map spell is really powerful as it will lower the enemy's status resistance yet again which is for late game fights super valuable it's quite rare to have a map spell on a tier 1 tome that has such late game qualities but here it is the school of cryomancy is also crazy good as we have instant access to it the best of all worlds as our home turf spreads itself and yeah that's that the second pick here is for me tome of faith you could substitute that with tome of zeal as well if you want a more offensive approach but this is crazy good several reasons first off staves of mending gives us a touch heal on our animists which means they can heal and shoot heal and heal there is a plenty of combo options with that one it's always an amazing thing to have mending touch also the faithful trait is really nice as you see here already we're not that deep in this run and i'm already fielding five supporters it makes them cheaper being faithful and that's a nice icing on the cake the chaplain is 
way better than I thought. I thought this guy would suck. Oh, I was so wrong. Because Bless gives you another really nice steroid which allows you to bolster up one unit amazingly. Mind you that you can fix up your low magical resistance with this one also a little bit, which makes the chaplain a really, really powerful dude. His healing prayer is also a negative status cleanse, making him a really good company to the animists. I really love mixing these. Wrath of the Faithful is surprisingly powerful. As we field lots of supporters, it's the only order tome we got, but still, as you see, I have right now five supporters already on my current run. That would be a whopping 35 points of spirit damage, just by that. And just by doing what I'm doing, not much effort needed. Wrath of the Faithful is for this build much better than it looks from the outside. Convent is a little bit of a weird one as you usually suffer a little bit from stability with the primals because your cities grow darn fast but if you have a good setup on your city going this is a really really nice late game upgrade and here again we get abbeys and they generate knowledge from farms this is amazing this is just good also we gain some free status resistance that powerful but uh, we have therefore a build that cranks out stupendous amounts of knowledge once your cities are consolidated a very powerful tier one foundation on tier two we're going into the tome of mayhem as we are fielding so much battle mage and supporter qualities and as you see mark of misfortune triggers on basically the majority of all my troops Misfortune has been updated recently, I don't know since when it triggers 8 damage when fumbling, but boy oh boy is that painful. It not only lowers the enemy's damage profile by 50%, it also makes them go ouch on that. This is really really good, it's a debuff and it's a, and it's a damage increase at the same time, really love it. Summon Gremlin gives you another nice and fancy skirmisher. Depending on your setup, you might want to forego these if you want to focus harder into the ice elementals, which are also skirmishes. But this setup gives you the capability of founding entire powerful skirmisher battalions, which is pretty fancy. Seriously, you can do a lot of nasty tricks with that. On top of that, Curse of Misfortune is always a nice uh, carpet debuff. And we have, again, Infectious Insanity. You can disable an entire banner with a uh, smart positioning of that one, especially the low-tier units. And yeah, so Confusion is a real nice siege project. Seriously, it is damn good. Especially since the um, order of things is broken up by this. All in all, powerful book. Very, very powerful book. So, after that, we go into the usual suspect, and I really, well... Tome of Glades. Pick it up, you upgrade your archers, you upgrade your shields, and the big downside is that your shields no longer have overwhelming stench, so keep that in mind, but to counteract that, you will just pick up a couple of your tier 3 spears, which are just an outright upgrade, because you don't need that many defensive qualities alongside anymore, as you will have a Spect of the Root, giving you the capability of burst healing your pole arms without anybody needing, without anybody's help. So, there's a really powerful thing here around there. We picked this book up mostly for its troop upgrades. You could, if you feel really comfortable around all that, of course, pick up another tier 2 book. You could go for Famists for massive support overkill. I think this would be absolutely uh, viable with tons of skirmishes, even more skirmishes if you wanted to. But either way, we are going to continue now into the tier 3 area. And that is, of course, where we pick up the Cold Dark. It's a no-brainer, we want that as a cryo build. Gaining direct access to tier 3 ice elementals is massive as it allows us to just have these bad boys. Freezing face is so nasty as it is a pretty decent chance of freezing people, especially if you primed them before with a, def uh, with a um, minus status resistance. It's really nice stuff. On top of that, we gain a... Flash Freeze, which alters the terrain directly into Arctic. And uh, we gain to 
we, we can debuff the enemy's status resistance even further. The Frostling transformation here is then, well, I mean, we have most of these uh, capabilities already, but it's here mostly the Moral Bonus, Frozen uh, Immunity, and Frost Resistance that will really, really round up your, uh, your, your, your team. And, well, Marching Winter is only interesting for the industri industry bonuses we spread that terrain by ourselves but spreading icy terrain is such a big thing for the primals this is where you basically take over the world and as you see here we have again a knowledge focused tome in all uh, in our um, disposal so yeah we really do a lot of knowledge production with that build. I really like it. So, the other tier 3 tome, which might come in a little bit as an odd card, is Pandemonium. To pull this off, if you have it like I did here, you need to go for your ruler for one chaos trait, because your ruler's skills give you also affinity points. So here I picked a chaos skill, Assassinate, which I didn't really want, but I wanted the Pandemonium book, so I went for that. Sometimes you can also just recruit a hero, which is a chaos adept, which would rule out that issue for you as well. Or you just pick a chaos uh, cultural trait, like the Ritual Cannibals, which goes on strong with builds like these. You have plenty of options. Hear me out. With the Pandemonium, you round out your build, because you field Many battle mages and supporters and Havoc magic is just massive. The ability to debuff the enemy with whatever can be darned good. I really can't uh, over exaggerate how, how darned good this is as it you will really notice how many random amazing things happen. Random stun, random berserk, random freeze. There are so many fun things that will happen, but all of them will be detrimental for the enemy. That's the good part about it. Mass Hysteria is also really cool if you want to have some ouch on the enemy. Mind you though, it is quite costy. Vessels of Chaos is where we want to get towards to as it will increase our damage profile quite substantially. We are already freezing and slowing per se, so we fulfill 10 to 20 percent of that thing just by being what we are and with havoc magic and the uh, mayhem misfortune procs we really have that 30 person going on for ourselves most of the time the chaos eater is a really cool frontliner pretty tanky and he can heal himself quite nastily out of all these random statuses that you inflict and on top of that he synergizes with havoc magic himself being a really nasty condition spreader himself so ah this one is beautiful so at that point you have pretty much a completed build i'll leave it up to you what you pick up on the tier fours as well pretty much all of the tier fours are really solid choices that can get you where you want to go for oblivion is massive as it it takes the debuff game to a entirely different level from that point on you will be really cranking out some really crazy stuff the downside on what we're playing here so far will be that you will be at the end of the road probably forced into the Tome of the Reaper, so you probably might want to get yourself a little bit of extra um, extra affinity points, and if that doesn't work, before picking a crappy tier 4 Tome that doesn't supplement your strategy, go backtracking and uh, pick up a low tier Tome that uh, just pulls off the trick i mean at some point of the game even the tier one tome of zeal would really be amazing as the zeal thing is giving you some extra damage but you also gain access to condemnation which is status resistance decrease or you can take the uh, inquisition tome backtrack there for a one hex radius condemnation which makes it easier to freeze up things there are so many ways that you can pull it off don't feel forced to pick up a tier 4 tome that you don't want that's just my advice at that point now let's move over to the strategy part so this build is like all primal builds a loaded gun right from the get-go you can work with your primal daughters protectors and animists to conquer the world darn 
quickly. So rush that tier two town hall as fast as you can. With this setup, if you play it like I have it here, you even start with an animist because you have here either a battle mage or a supporter. We don't have native battle mages, so it's always a supporter. Really powerful to start out with an animist, in my opinion. I really, really enjoyed that a lot. With this build, you will be utilizing the Snow Spirits quite heavily. These are really good, but most important is crank out those unit enchantments and most importantly, get those White Witches and those Chaplains researched as fast as you can. Especially the White Witches are real game changers and their strategic access to freezing whoever you need to have frozen. This is a fairly high range. It always hits. There is no dodging. It is on itself a very amazing little thing. And the frost bolts do get so much enhanced by our tomes over the course of the time that they are really powerful. I also want to mention that the Primal Communion here transforms these um, Ice Mages into something else. I haven't... Uh, like you see here, Mana is your one of your real downsides. You have lots of knowledge, but Mana is a little bit problematic. So that's one thing that I already want to mention. But the fun part about this build is, starting from the Tier 2 Town Hall, Chaplains and White Witches, you basically can take over the world from there. You just need to take care that these uh, supporters and battle mages stay always alive, and the frontliners, well, they are pretty replaceable folk, especially since we can summon the lesser snow spirits, we gain the access to summon gremlins along the road if we'd want to as well, later we gain the big tier 3 ice elemental, so we can always set up something to fill up our ranks with. The Ancestral Warden is really important once you hit mid and late game, as these guys are your hideous stench spreaders. Due to the Primal Lunge, they are so good at just being where you need them. If you need somebody really, really, really desperately frozen, there goes your champion. You can also just prime them up with your many animists and heal them twice before battle to activate their Glacial Mammoth Spoon right from the get-go, as this here gives you a baseline chance of freezing people, which is uh, outright amazing. I, I really, really like that. So, these guys are really important. You won't be able to rely on your protectors alone, and... Very, very strong recommendation here. 50% of your army should be actually supporters and or battle mages. And the rest should be just stuff to stand in front to tank stuff because we are totally abusing the summoning game here in this build. Summon Primal Mammoth out of your Animists is super easy to trigger. You walk up, you shoot once, next turn another Animist procs their spiritual healing on top of them, boom, instant Mammoth. This way you can set up insane amounts of troops. Because the fun part is, if four animists walk up and shoot every, uh, shoot on a target, over the course of two turns you can summon four mammoths. This is how crazy they are. You give up the healing potential of spiritual healing with that. But that doesn't matter so much as we have Mending Touch, which basically, you see, 15 versus 20 points of healing, free action healing, really nice stuff. And that's where Chaplain comes to play. These guys can burst heal much better. They also cleanse status effects, leaving you the other spell from your animists more for the Rising Fury gameplay. If you can apply it where the healing actually matters, good job. You actually learn to master your um, faction because that's what, where I personally think shows how good you can play them. How well you can use the healing effect of your animists at the same time. Prime up your fighters with the bless, heal your people with the mending touch and abuse these abilities as hard as you can of course on your heroes as well. So all of my heroes rock the mending touch and spiritual healing and restore as well because there is no such thing as too much healing in this game, in my humble opinion at least, especially as long as you're fighting against the AI. I don't know how PvP behaves, but if you're fighting AI, this really gives you an edge. On top of that, we are playing the Wizard King um, ruler here. I would strongly recommend simply for the overchannel's sake, allowing you to spit out two Primal Mammoths in one turn 
is, yeah, you are just swarming the battlefield with these. I don't know how long the strategy will last like that, or what nerfs will hit that spell, but I'm pretty sure that the Animists might stay like they are, or my personal prediction is that their Primal Mammoth summon will be a once per battle thing at some point. I don't know how it will evolve, but this build is full of summons. You got so many summons on top of what you already got with your battle mages and supporters. So this build is massively dominant out of two reasons. You have super many disposable troops. You can you have temporary summons, but you also have permanent summons in form of the snow spirits, which means you can also always sacrifice units without uh, batting an eye on on what uh, what kind of troops the enemy will destroy because you know you can replace them quite easily keep an eye out on your backlines though these guys are not that easy to replace the other dominant part about this build is you can just freeze people so darned effectively not only do you have the white witches which have a strategic freezing blast it is also the mammoth spoon thingy which turns all of your troops into potential freezing guys since we are using almost only troops with repeating attacks very sorry mr primal charger but you're mostly not part of the party you see I'm, i didn't use these at all for this build maybe my bad but uh i i really don't construct builds where these guys fit in i'm very sorry about that they aren't bad they are just not that necessary for this build either way the strategic freezing capabilities give you just yeah, you you have a lot of control. To make matters worse, the Glacial Mammoth comes with a Stomp attack, which gives you an AoE freeze, so basically whenever you cannot control a situation, you can just summon a Mammoth right in front of the enemy and just Stomp. Yeah. So, where does this build end and where are its weaknesses? I haven't found too many. It's really important that you start switching out the tier 1 units as these are your glaring weaknesses. But um, apart from that, yeah, you can just rack up so many troops and I uh, always find that support heavy builds are stupidly dominant. So let me know what you guys think. It's really important that you keep rocking those uh, mammoth dens, of course, so keep capturing them, expand like crazy, decide for yourself how you want to win, but I found it ridiculously easy to steamroll the enemy with this build, so let me know what you think. Have a good one on that. Leave me your comments, leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and consider subscribing. I'd be really happy if you'd check out the description box below as well, which is full of cool links leading to my Discord, Twitch, where I stream regularly, and also this, uh, PayPal, Patreon, and buy me a coffee. There's also a YouTube channel membership system, so you might want to check that out as well. And that all being said, a big, big thanks to all the supporters of the channel and a big, big thanks to you watching this video up until the very end. I'm very, very appreciating that. So see you guys on the next one and bye bye.